Um, that's great. Next up is uh, Joey Chung. Uh, he's the co-founder and CEO of the News Lens, which is one of the fastest growing digital sites in Asia. Um, and has just recently had more investment and the investors noted the awareness of fresh voices, um, his, the use of social media and aggregation and something that particularly warms my heart, their emphasis on user centered design as uh, part of the reason they were excited about participating. So thank you, Joey. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Michael. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, we're the News Lens. Um, we prepared a few slides to give you a quick uh, overall idea of what we've been doing for the past couple of months. Uh, but before we get into that, I'll just give you a quick rundown of everything that's been happening. So uh, overall, we're a very, very young startup. Uh, the company didn't start it, uh, operations until July of 2013. Uh, the website itself, the platform, didn't go live until August of 2013. So overall, we've only been in operations for about seven or eight months. But um, I think we're probably one of the fastest growing websites in recent Taiwan history. When I was checking last night, um, our, our monthly unique page views, I'm sorry, our monthly unique uh, visitors has uh, hovered around 3 million, and our page views has hit about 7 million right now. So we're one of the fastest sites going in Taiwan, and we're uh, very, very proud of that. Um, so in a nutshell, we wanted to be Taiwan's first and eventually Asia, uh, the most important uh, social media or digital newspaper. So we're not doing anything about print or, or magazines. And um, so we started that in August. And as of now, we have about 180 writers writing for us. And uh, on an average given day, there's about uh, 40 pieces. Of those 40 pieces, roughly 20 are news aggregations and about 20, is our, uh, 20 are columnists. So, for example, at uh, 9 a.m. in the morning, there might be Taiwan news, uh, you know, all, all the news aggregation. At 10, there might be Asian news aggregation. And, and at 11, there might be uh, world news aggregation. And after that, there's columns in banking and social enterprise and startups and, and academics and, uh, and finances. So, for example, we were joking that our, our average target uh, our audience might be a 35-year-old banker. Uh, we don't really care about anyone under 20. We don't really care for now uh, anyone that's over 60 at this point that still reads uh, traditional newspapers. So let's say you're a 35-year-old. Uh, no offense. Uh, <laughs> I included my parents in that. When I was doing this, my parents had no idea what I was doing. And I said, it's OK, I don't really care. Um, um, so, um, so, so let's say the, uh, the average target audience is a 35-year-old banker. You know, He wakes up from 9 AM until he goes home at 9 PM. Everything that happens in that ecosystem where he wakes up uh, in our generation, he looks at his iPhone, you know, he goes to work either through subway or taxis or buses, uh, he takes the elevator, he goes to work, he goes to, at least in Asia, mostly it's uh, having lunches in food courts, and then you, go, and you repeat the whole process going back. So we want to be in that entire ecosystem for our generation. So for example, when we started work uh, in August, and in September we, we signed our first deal with HTC. So in all the uh, traditional Chinese markets in, uh, in HTC cell phone markets, uh, our news pops out on their blink feed function uh, every couple of minutes. Uh, come uh, October, we signed a deal with Microsoft Windows 8. So all the Microsoft Windows 8 operating systems in Asia, uh, mainly in Taiwan, uh, either it's uh, desktop or laptop or cell phones uh, pops up, you know, our news uh, whenever. Uh, come uh, October, um, we signed a deal with uh, this main uh, TV distributor that has all the public places, those, tele uh, those television sets that broadcasts uh, trailers or commercials. It broadcasts our video news about once an hour in all the food courts, all the movie theaters, and all the airports in Taiwan. And, uh, coming, and uh, in November, uh, we signed a deal with uh, BTV. They own all of the public screens and all of the TV stations and the buses in Taiwan. And in December, we signed a deal with Focus Media. Uh, they're the, one of the biggest public places, uh, TV screens, and all of the uh, elevators in Asia. So we, we have distribution in all the uh, TV stations, uh, the, the TV platforms uh, in elevators. And as of February, we signed a deal with uh, Taiwan Taxi, the biggest ta uh, taxi owner uh, in Taiwan. So those little TV screens in the back of the taxis, uh, they broadcast our news about once every 30 minutes. And I'm in talks right now with uh, Taipei Metro and all the other metro stations throughout Taiwan. So the idea, like I said, from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., um, we want to basically be there. Uh, when you're going to work, you're looking at your cell phone, uh, we have newsletters, uh, we're, on, uh, we're on Flipboard. Uh, when you're heading into the office, uh, when you're taking the elevator, when you're having lunch, uh, when you're looking at your iPad or your iPhone, everything, you know, all of that entire ecosystem, we want to be kind of like that 
that friendly guy next door or girl next door where you just lift up your head and you see you know, fair, objective news. Now, something I'll go into a little bit later is the Asian context is a little bit different. Um, for example, in Taiwan, I would probably argue 80 or 90 percent of the major media platforms are owned by uh, major media companies, conglomerates, um, and there's this huge sense of frustration. No matter how, how you guys feel, you know, how bad it is in the, uh, in the U.S., I would say it's 10 times, 50 times, or 100 times worse in Taiwan or Asia, where no one really trusts uh, the TV stations or the newspapers because they're very, very biased or very, very left-leaning or right-leaning to the point that you know, the headlines read completely differently. Um, so there's that anger and frustration uh, in, in Taiwan and Asia, where we're really trying to, to represent that change, where our average age is about 28. Our staff right now, we have about 15 people full-time, and we really want to come out and really change that. So we really want to represent that young generation coming out and only reporting news that you think, that we think is important, biased, and rational. So we don't report anything that's too gutter journalism. So, for example, in Taiwan right now, it's actually very, very common to have headline news about a porn star uh, or headline news about some random carjacking or, or car accident. We only put up news that we think you should know or that we think is important. If it's not important, we're not even going to put it up there. So you come in in the morning for the news, and after that, there's columns. There's, a, there's different columns across every industry, across, across every sector. So going back to that banker idea, uh, after you finish reading the news in the morning, um, you might be curious what's going to happen about the banking industry in Taiwan. Uh, we Find like your first regional, uh, your your local newspaper, like an, an overseas Chinese newspaper. So let's say you're a 50 year old immigrant living in Vancouver. You don't have to read five different newspapers or ten different websites from Taiwan or Hong Kong uh, or China. Uh, all the news that you want to know and all the columns that you want to know about that region will be on one platform, everything integrated. So if you're a 50-year-old immigrant, you might be curious what's going on in, in Hong Kong, uh, what's the latest news going on uh, out of Shanghai, and after that, you might be curious uh, what's a 25-year-old banker thinking about in, in Singapore? What's a 35-year-old student thinking about in Beijing? And what's a 40-year-old um, startup guy thinking about in Taipei? So all of those opinions, we want to gradually, gradually integrate them into one platform. So uh, with that being said, uh, this is my uh, other co-founder and editor-in-chief. So just to provide some context, uh, as I was saying before, uh, in Taiwan and in m most parts of greater China right now, uh, there's this huge, huge distrust uh, towards media. It's, I would say it borders on anger. Um, if you, there was a poll a couple of months back where if you ask what are the two main causes of chaos in Taiwan, um, number one, the government, and number two, it's media. So we're really trying to capitalize on that. Um, so this is our, our 2.0 version that launched uh, uh, in September. Um, we kind of revamped everything after a month. It still looks, in my opinion, pretty ugly. Um, but well, we, we uh, revamped the whole look maybe every three or four months after we, got, we grabbed enough data. Um, it's mostly in Chinese right now, but something I was really, really proud of is there's this little button over here uh, on our launch day. Um, there's a button over here that uh, you can easily switch over from simplify to, tradi to traditional Chinese. So it was kind of our, our little way of hinting from day one that this was not just going to be about Taiwan. It's going to be about the entire Chinese-speaking market or eventually greater China or even Asia. Um, out of the 180 writers that we have right now, roughly 20% of them are outside of Taiwan. And we have like Americans writing from Silicon Valley. We have a few people writing from New York. They submit in English and we translate all of them into Chinese. But at the same time, 
time, there's, there's a button uh, on our page that says you can also read it in the original English form. So because of that, we're starting to get a lot of traffic from uh, Hong Kong, from China, from, from Singapore. Uh, we got blocked uh, from China around November, three months after our launch. And I remember that day very, very well. Uh, when we got that, you know, that firewall block, uh, one of our investors wrote an email saying, you're not a true journalism, a journalist until that happens, so congratulations. <laughs> Um, so also on, on our first day, everything was adaptable. So this is our, our, our iPhone version. Uh, so it's adaptable uh, regardless if you read through iPad, iPhone, or, or desktop. Um, this is our 3.0 version. It's going to look much more modern. Uh, it's, it's going on live next week. So it, you know, everything is split much more clearly into like news, uh, trending opinions, and videos. Uh, we started getting video. Uh, we started putting on video news in February. So we should be able to stabilize that by uh, end of April. And coming in, uh, in, in, Mar in May, we're going to have an anchor come out and actually explain why we're choosing these different news segments. All of the news videos will be under 90 seconds, because it's roughly the time between one subway station to the next. So going back to the uh, disruption theory, we really want to start from newspapers to magazines, to online video, and I'm talking to uh, digital uh, cable providers right now in Google, uh, Google Chromecast. So maybe we'll go on to TV distribution sometime around June or July. Um, this is our media coverage. Um, since we were one of the few uh, media startups in, in Taiwan, so we got a lot of media coverage around December or, or uh, January. Um, and since we were going pretty fast, to our own surprise, uh, at the end we invited a lot. We, uh, we invited our first strategic investors. Uh, we welcomed our investors in December, um, and they were Sasha Fusinik, who used to work uh, of the uh, Media Development Fund, and uh, Marcus Brockley, the previous editor in chief of the Wall Street Journal and Washington Post. So they are our first angel investors, and they are our board members as we speak. And um, so this was the original, the, the line in the bottom was our original expected traffic. The blue line is our current traffic. It's a little bit dated. It was about a week ago. Uh, when I checked last night, it was closer to 3 million right now. And these are our page views. It went past, it's close to 7 million at this point. Um, the sunflower moving, so very quickly, I know I'm running out of time. Um, I don't know if you've been watching the news in Asia, but um, the, the biggest story coming out in the past couple of days was students basically stormed the uh, legislative yuan, which is basically the, the Congress uh, of Taiwan. Uh, they were protesting against this uh, trade pact with China. And it was a perfect piece that I think symbolizes our coming of age and the coming of age of social media in Taiwan and eventually in Asia. It was a movement started by students. Uh, the, the entire social media, the platform, they're, they're, they're you know, their main frustration was mainly based at students and uh, at, at, at the older generation. So what we saw in the past couple of days was because of we were focusing on being fair, you know, objective, and uh, you know, a, a startup done by young people. We really wanted to capture on that. So uh, uh, we've been growing really fast. Our uh, main editorial philosophy is: Does the average Taiwan or Asian reader need to know about these news? Are we providing as fairly as possible all the important perspectives? And if we are, uh, what does this have to, have, have to do with the average reader? So I know I'm running out of time, so very quickly, these are the last few pages. This was the, Democrat, uh, the, the movement I was talking about in the past couple of weeks. Um, so this is very, very you know, uh, rudimentary, but we, we hired an anchor to basically report and interview right there through social media, uh, the, the government representative, the student representative, uh, and different academic professors. This picture became very, very viral. It was our IT guy uh, climbing into the, the uh, legislative rent on the first night. So we really wanted to showcase that we were for the students, by the students, and really trying to represent a fair perspective. Um, and this was interviewing a future mother about her perspective of what she thinks about this movement, trying to get very, very diverse opinions out there. Uh, this, this piece I was very, very proud of. We interviewed the wife of one of the police officers that was there to, to basically you know, kick away the protesters, trying to provide diverse, fair objectives. And uh, our most famous piece so far is, uh, the, the little Chinese translation says, can we fairly bring back uh, coverage about this piece? And it says over here, uh, our, our photographer is going in at 77 hours. This is a mother uh, writing uh, a letter to the kids being still stuck uh, in, the, in the Congress building. Um, this is 79 hours, all the police officers resting at night. Um, this is you know, the actual movement during the day. Um, this is all the lawyers and the doctors progressing their, uh, you know, offering their support. 
And this is one of the uh, government officials also locked inside the Congress building, and we're trying to provide that uh, fair uh, objective. So anyway, in a nutshell, I'm sorry that was very, very quick, um, but it, we're the news lens, and we welcome your comments and suggestions. Thank you.